If there is a campaign, and I think the campaign is aimed directly at me, it's stupid. Tell me in the name of... Music is fucking stale right now. The industry is kind of like a big fickle monster. Deal is not the goal to reach. So I think it's quite a cynical campaign geared at me, which is actually going to spoil the party for these three. Do what you tell me! Fuck you, I won't do what you tell me! Okay, this is Pete from Metalheads, and I'm hanging out with John Malta, who started the Rage Against the Machine Facebook campaign, and Ravi Parson, who's making a documentary, a Dude, Where's My Music? How are we doing, guys? Hello, you alright? Yep, doing pretty good. Uh, as for Ravi, then, you're making a documentary, Dude, Where's My Music? Uh, tell us a bit about the documentary. Well, the documentary is pretty much, I've just turned 24, and I'm kind of saying, like, where's my generation's Metallica? Where's my generation's Slayer? Right. You know, the next guys. And, you know, what are people doing, like, you know, on the grassroots level to kind of make people know that we don't want, like, boring, mediocre music to take over the airwaves? Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, you've interviewed, you know, a lot of artists. Can you just sort of go through some of the, you know, the biggest ones you've done? Of course, so yeah. We've done Slash, Anvil, Henry Rollins. Yes. Yeah. You know, we've done these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what is their sort of, what is, you know, their response to it so far? Well, uh, so far, I think, uh, you know, thankfully, lots of artists have been like, thank God someone's doing this, and thank God, you know, like, they you know, want to be asked these questions because they're you know they're normally asked like what's what's your band's name mean and you know what, what was the tour like and mm. you know this is something they feel because obviously they're musicians and they're passionate about music and you know yeah so yeah it really resonates with yeah them. I mean obviously with you making this film at this time and with with the rage campaign it is sort of great timing that because I think the rage campaign showed how much people were just crying out you know to get rid of the mediocre sort of, you know, stuff that's in the mainstream right now? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of why we did it. Um, it, it got to a, a stage where I just felt that there was just so much tepid, uh, nondescript, uh, you know, just crap, really, yeah. um, in, you know, in, in the charts these days. Not just in the charts, but in, in general. And, and um, you know, and I, just, I just wanted to do something to just shake it up a bit and give it a bit of a kick in the backside. Yeah. To say, you know, there is decent music out there. Uh, there is some great bands out there. Um, but all, all you guys are seeing is this just sugary pop, you know, mm. uh, on our mainstream and on our TV and on our radio. And it was a kind of a... Um, a bit of a punk up sort of revolution to say, you know, we're not having this anymore. Yeah. Enough's enough, you know. Yeah. So I don't, it worked, which was even, you know, even better. It worked. I mean, when you started the campaign, did you ever think it would take off to, to the level it did? Um, I have to say, I I felt that it I, it could get pretty big, but mm. I didn't think that. Um, no, I mean to, to get a number one single because you got yeah. number two with another track previously. Was that right? Not quite. No, we we, we tried the year before. Yeah. Um, but I kind of I kind of like um, did it off the cuff. It was literally like, mm. oh, I've had a great idea. Uh, let's beat Cowell at doing this. I didn't do any planning, didn't do any preparation. I just steamed straight in, yeah. and it failed. I think we got to about number sixty-two or something like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm glad that worked. That happened because. Mm. When I decided to do the Rage Against the Machine campaign, I kind of thought, right, ah, right, I cocked that up last year. Yeah. We'll do it this way this time. And, you know, lots of these things where I've made mistakes before just came out rosy, you know, mm. it worked. So. And, and do you think that the Rage Against the uh, Machine campaign sort of opened people's eyes in the record industry to say, oh, actually, yeah, there is a lot of people out there that, that do like, you know, rock and metal. Have you noticed, you know, perhaps people in the industry saying, well, actually, we'll give this, give this a go? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we've. I mean, the response has been paramount all over the place. Um, I mean, you, you, you've got to look at the facts that on Facebook alone, uh, with all the groups and all the the, the the fan pages and that, we had 1.6 million people yeah. behind it going, yeah, this is this is what we want to do. This mm. we, we need to change something, um, and it, it's still going strong now. And yeah, people within the industry have got in, in touch with me and, and mm. said nice one you know there there is some great talent out there that are just just not being seen mm. and um you know and if even if it just it's helped one or two you know decent rock or metal bands to sort of get a little bit of a foothold 
then that's that's good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, back to you know the documentary, you know, with new bands, you know, getting your next metallic sort of thing. There's loads of great new bands coming up lately, like, like Airborne, who are doing great, and you know, and it's like, do you think personally that you know we're going to get those new bands? Well, I, I really hope so. That's why I'm doing the film. Like, I, you mm. know, I I think that, you know I don't think there's lack of talent. I think there's so much talent out there, but. You know, will they be heard? Will they be played on radio? Will they be played on music television? And I know on a, a part of you know p- people say the argument is like you know you can just download it and you can find it, but yeah, you, there's no filter. You know, like you you could have turned on MTV and hear Captain Beefheart and Frank Zappa and Fugazi and Slayer yeah. all one after the other alongside Mariah Carey. I'm not anti-pop music or whatever. I'm just yeah. th- saying my music, i.e., rock music and heavy metal, should get a fairer. You know, share of the market. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And do you think it's more to do with illegal downloading, or do you think it's more to do with mainstream media annoying uh, rock and roll? I think it's a lot to do with the media. Obviously, illegal downloading has you know had a dent yeah. in music, but then bands like Tool release an album every five years, and people still buy that record because it's a quality album. You know, if you put quality stuff and you presented well in front of people people like god damn it i need to get this mm. i need to stop what i'm doing and run out and get this yeah you know i mean it's quite interesting now because you know the record industry is completely changing and one thing that keeps coming up again is you know 360 contracts i mean like you know what's your view on that i, I think it's you know initially i thought it was just really unfair it's just like you know why should you get the share of the merch and yeah and the touring when your deal is well looking after the record sale that's like me saying mm. i'm making a film but you know and i've interviewed john but i want to you know cut of his paycheck because he's in my family you know this rubbish you know but then in the same breath on the flip side like they've they've got to get the money somehow to go and you know give the band tour support you know give them money to make the merch mm. so if if the deals are cut fairer and not so much in the solely in the record label's favor you know you know, if, if everyone can benefit fairly and evenly, yeah, then yeah. that's a good thing. In fact, one of the the people I spoke to, the Warner MD, who's top guy, Quarter Marshall, he's like a he's a one seventy five degree man. He doesn't right. agree with the the three sixty deal. Mm. You know, so so lots of people higher up don't actually agree with it. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, <clears throat> Now, uh, what, what about the, the release date for, for this DVD? When you're hoping to get it out, you know, for the public? Well, it's quite tentative. Like we're aiming for, like you know, you know, 2011. Right. You know, because right now three film sales agents looking at it. Mm. You know, obviously John's got on board, and we've got like press in Metal Hammer with both. John and, and I are defenders of defenders the faith. Defenders of the faith. <laughs> of the yeah. faith. Metal Hammer. Yeah. Yeah. That must have been a bit surreal. The Metal Hammer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, when we got uh, nominated for that. Uh, back in I think March, April time, and I had an entire page seven in Metal Hammer to me, which mm. was kind of kind of strange, you yeah. know. Um, and then the actual awards themselves, in which we, we picked up the actual the actual award yeah. for the year, which was fantastic. Yeah, uh, it's brilliant to, to, to grab that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it has been a little bit surreal. You know, and, and, what, and what were Rage Against the Machine like with you then? Like you know, meeting them, it must have been quite you know sort of like. Oh my god! I'm, I'm eating rage against the machine. We've done this for. Yeah, I mean, rage were fantastic. They were, uh, um, they were very humble actually, and, they, and we we actually we went backstage at Finsbury Park, and we met up with the guys, and um, they were just lovely. I mean, they really were um, just so down to earth, mm. and you, you know, you had this sort of image in your head of these big rock stars, and you know, yeah, they sort yeah. of pull up in their limos. No, none of that. They're all sitting down, eating a takeaway. We we sat down with them, had a good chat about just music in general. Yeah. Talked about the Clash, you know, yeah. and um, yeah, they were just just four regular guys. I mean, literally, they were just four really cool guys, and um, we got what, on really well. What about Simon Carl? Then you spoke to him much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he actually rang me um, on the the Saturday as the chart was about to finish, mm. um, and my phone went and and I think where the hell's that? And it was and yeah, Simon rang me. He was, uh, to be fair, he was pretty cool actually. He, he yeah. um, we had a good chat, about half an hour. Um, he wished us all the best of luck, and he did actually say, you know, whatever the result, how you've done that, and how you've managed to pull that off, I'll, I'll never know. And it makes yeah. my company work three times as hard to find out. So uh, yeah, he was, he was quite, uh, he was pretty cool about things. Um, Simon, so yeah, 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 yeah. Can't, can't, can't really come out and slate the guy and yeah. say, yeah, he was that. Type. No, no, he was, he was cool. It was all right. 